in this lecture we will talk about uh, sequence learning problems and in particular some uh, neural network architectures uh, which deal with sequences. So, recurrent neural networks uh, is one thing that we are going to see. Uh, so, we will start with the first module uh, which is on sequence learning problems. So, what are sequence learning problems? So, so far we have dealt with two types of networks one is feed forward neural networks and the other is convolutional neural networks and in both these networks the input was always of a fixed size. So, what do I mean by that is? So, if you take a convolutional neural network you are feeding 32 cross 32 images to it or 227 cross 227 images to it and the size was always fixed. All your training images, all your test images were always scaled, scaled or cropped to this particular size. Okay. Similarly, when we used feed forward neural networks, so one example was word to vec the size of the input was always fixed. We had this input of size 2 v right or k v in general if you are looking at a k word window. Right. So, this input was not varying from one uh, training instance to another training instance or one training instance to the test instance or anything. Like that. And secondly, each input to the network was independent to the previous or future inputs. So, I pass an image of an apple, I get the prediction apple, then I pass some other image to the network and I get a different prediction. It does not matter whether my previous image was an apple or a car or a mango or whatever, it just treats each of these in inputs independently. There is no dependence between the inputs and the size of the inputs is fixed. But in many applications, the input is not of a fixed size. So, and also successive inputs may not be independent of each other. So, let us understand this with the example of auto completion that all of us are used to while typing SMSs or WhatsApp or other things. Uh, so, given the first character D, I want to predict the next character which is E. Then once I have predicted E, I want to predict the next character again and so on till I get the full word. Okay. This is what my task is. So, let us notice a few things. First successive inputs are no longer independent. If I know that the previous input was D and the current input is E, then I know that only a few things are possible. Right. In particular, if you know that the previous input was a Z and the current input is a E, then most likely the next is going to be a B. Right. But if you ignore the previous input which was Z, then after E there are many things which can appear. Right. So, the inputs are no longer independent of each other. And the second thing is the length of the input is not fixed because words could be of arbitrary sizes. I am trying to type the word deep that is 4 letters or if I am trying to type the word learn which is 5 letters, machine which is 7 letters and so on. Right. So, the input size is no longer fixed and the inputs are now dependent on each other. Right. There is some dependence between them. So, now this is very different from what we saw in convolutional neural networks and feed forward neural networks. So, how do we deal with this? And the third thing here is that each network I am calling this as a network and I will just clarify some notations also soon. Each network is actually performing the same task. It is taking as input a character and it is producing as output one character. And now just remember that these networks I have drawn them vertically you are used to seeing them as this. So, this is input, this is your hidden layer and this is your output. So, this is the green part, this is the blue part and this is the orange input and this is a fully connected layer. Right. So, each of these boxes is actually this network. Okay. I am just drawing it more concisely because I need to draw many such networks. So, everyone gets that just remember this mind that each of these uh, orange, blue, green structures is a fully connected network like this. So, these problems are known as sequence learning problems where you have a sequence of inputs and then you need to produce some outputs and each input actually corresponds to one time step. So, this is the uh, input at time step 1, time step 2, time step 3, time step 4 and so on. So, let us look at some more examples of such sequence learning problems. So, one classic example is the task of predicting the part of speech tag of every word in a sentence. Right. So, I am given a, a sentence man is a social animal and for every word I want to predict whether it is a noun or an adverb or an adjective or a verb or any other part of speech tag. Right. And this is how it happens. Now, notice that once we see an adjective in this case social, we are almost sure that the next word is going to be a noun or at least we are sure that the next word cannot be an article or most likely it will not be a verb. Right? There is a very high prior that the next word is going to be a noun. So, that is why these inputs are actually dependent on each other. So, the current output not only depends on the current input, 
it also actually depends on the previous input, right. Unlike the case of convolutional neural networks where I feed in an apple, it has no dependence on whether the previous input that I passed through the network was an apple or a car or what not. And the size of the input is not fixed because these sentences could be of arbitrary length. I could have sentences as small as 3 to 4 words or as long as 25 to 30 words, right. So, the average Wikipedia sentence for example is 25 words, roughly 25 words. And notice that in this case, we are interested in producing an output at every time step because for every input, I want an output. And each network, again this orange, blue, green structure is performing the same task. It is taking as input a word and it is producing an output a, what is it producing it as an output? Part of speech tag. So, here the two examples that we saw, we were having an input at every time step and an output at every time step. But there could also be cases, we are interested in producing output only at some time steps or at a final time step. So, let us consider a task of predicting the polarity of a movie review, right, sentiment analysis. So, I am given a movie review and after I have read the entire review, I should give a prediction, right. Otherwise, it would be incomplete. I cannot actually look at only this word and give a prediction, it does not make sense. It does not also make sense to make a prediction here at this point because there could have been the movie was boring, but I still loved it or but the action was amazing or something like that right? because it could have already flipped after that. So, you need to look at the entire sentence and make a prediction, but you are not interested in prediction as these intermediate time steps. Even in this case, you can actually assume that every network is performing the same task. It is taking a word as an input and it is producing some output, it is just that till the end you do not care about the outputs, you care about the output only produced at the final step. You do not care about what the outputs are at this time step, right? that is one way of looking at it. So, again at every time step you have the same network, but you are only interested in some time steps of the network. Okay. Uh, finally, it is not always necessary that sequences are composed of only words, what other kinds of sequences are you familiar with, popular sequences, speech is one videos are another, right. So, a video could be treated as a sequence of images and now you could have a video where some, <laughs> where someone is performing Surya Namaskar and as you can understand that I need to look at the entire sequence and only then be able to make a prediction, right. If I stop at this point, if I only consider this, this is only Namaskar, no Surya Namaskar, right. So, you have to look at the entire sequence and then decide what the output is and you do not care about the intermediate outputs. I do not care what is the prediction till this point. This of course, is again some asan, but I do not care about that. I care about the full sequence that I am dealing with. This is just to motivate that sequences can be of all types and I apologize to the speech people. I do not really understand much of speech processing. So, I never give speech examples, but video is something I understand. So, I can give examples from this.